Hello everyone. In this video here I'll be doing a demonstration how to determine if there's a break in the wire in your vehicle's electrical system. Uh, possibly this break could be causing a fault such as uh, not being able to start your vehicle or uh, maybe your headlights aren't working or some other type of issue. Now when using your multimeter what you want to do is select the continuity option on the multimeter. Now not all multimeters are equipped with this uh, such as this one here. So what I'll be using is actually the ohm setting on it and it is set to the hundredth increment. Now, the, basically the differences between ohms and continuity, uh, ohms will tell you if there's any resistance. Uh, continuity tells you basically if there's a yes or no uh, for a break. Now, just to make sure the ohm meter itself is zero, what I'm going to do is just test the two terminals together itself, like so, and I got a 0.7 ohm reading. Now, basically what this could be here is maybe a low bat battery in the multimeter itself or possibly one of the terminals are dirty here or even the probes itself are a little bit dirty. Uh, it's normally nothing to worry about. But basically you know what the setting is when you touch uh, the actual wires themselves on the vehicle itself. Now when testing the terminal here I'm just doing an example test. So basically what I've done here is I um, on this vehicle here I did actually have a wiring issue with it so I do have the uh, ECU box out of the vehicle itself. Now when removing an ECU on a vehicle itself if you're ever doing any test you want to make sure you do disconnect the battery and let the vehicle sit for a number of minutes. Now this does depend between vehicles and make sure all the power is drained from the ECU itself so when you do remove it you don't short a circuit out. So just in this example here I already know which one is the negative terminal on the ECU uh, pinout itself here so I'll just show you what it looks like. Hopefully you're able to see it on the ECU itself. So you can see we have a 0.7 ohms reading so basically that is the exact same reading as we did when we touched the uh, two testers together. Now moving on to another one here. You can see we have another reading. This is also another ground pin. Now we're having about 10 ohms uh, reading here. Now possibly what this could be is just maybe a dirty pin itself. Um, maybe there's not a break in a wire or there could possibly be one uh, that is just starting and just connected very little. So it obviously uh, does either need to be cleaned or the wire needs to be replaced itself. Now when checking a terminal itself, sometimes in these plugs here you can remove the terminals out themselves. Uh, like on this particular vehicle here, I've already had this one removed. This is actually the wire I did source out with the issue itself here. Uh, other times what will happen, it depends on the vehicle's manufacturer itself. Uh, you actually do need some type of little special tool in order to pop the pin out to pop these terminal connections out. Sometimes what can happen is these terminal connections here, they can actually corrode up so they do need to be cleaned. Other times what happens is uh, from the heat of the electronics, they can actually heat up and expand inside there so they do need to be a little closed up so whatever they're plugging into they do fit tighter on. Now other times what happens here is considering the uh, wire is exposed in there when it's crimped in the inside here. This one actually is a full rubber casing so it's a pretty slim chance for something like this to happen. Uh, but it depends obviously on the uh, style of what is used in the vehicle itself. Uh, moisture can get to this crimp connection and actually break the wire off itself. Now normally what you can do here, there's actually really no uh, better way that I'm aware of um, when checking this, is you can actually put a needle into the back side of the uh, wire itself. So what you actually do is you take your test plug and you go from the one side here and you go from the back side on here and you actually take a needle and you stick it through the casing itself and test the wire if there's actually any uh, any resistance or continuity between this here. Normally I don't usually like doing this too much because what happens is you actually poke a hole in the casing itself which uh, could possibly cause future problems down the road. Uh, moisture could get in there and uh, then possibly corrode the wires uh, within this casing itself there. Uh, so what you want to do is either uh, tape it up, maybe put a little bit of silicone on there or even uh, probably the best solution would be is actually put some heat shrink on there. Now in order to determine if you actually have a break in the wire itself, there is a couple of methods you can use. Uh, one, you can actually go with the needle along the whole wire itself and keep uh, uh, penetrating the casing itself and actually doing tests from the uh, one end of the plug to where it's located at the, uh, the other end. So for instance, one would be here to the plug itself on the connector and the other one would be to the ECU box itself. Now this does depend where your break is and uh, how your vehicle is designed. What you can do also is you can actually look along and inspect the wire itself. Uh, 
what on this one here I found actually was uh, you could see there's a somewhat of a corrosion uh, actually coming to the outside of the casing itself so obviously that means there was a break in the casing now this could possibly be when somebody actually tested it themselves before and possibly uh, penetrated the casing itself maybe it actually went through a spot in the uh, the, the, the electrical duct here and it actually rubbed against the uh, plastic itself and possibly broke the casing or maybe there's a common spot where there's a lot of flex in the wire and then eventually it does crack the casing which uh, makes it prone to water. Now another thing you can also do too is it's a little hard to show on the camera here but basically just taking two hands one on this side and one on the other side here and just simply pull the wire apart gently. Now you don't want to pull it too hard because you could possibly break the wire yourself so you would kind of want to be gentle with it but also just enough pressure that you can actually see if the wire uh, is, uh, is expanding a little bit. Now what you want to look for in that is what will happen is actually uh, the casing on the outside is the only thing that's holding the wire together so actually internally the uh, wire itself it's broken and when you actually stretch this apart it'll be similar to an elastic band basically you have the original thickness of the elastic band and what happens when you stretch it actually gets thinner same thing with what will happen with the casing itself. Now there is a few different methods you can use in order to repair such an issue like this. Uh, one you can go to your local dealer and purchase a new wire itself. Not all times they come with a single wire. They may come in a full harness, so it will need to be replaced. Uh, this also can be uh, somewhat of a pricey fix in the end. It depends on your vehicle's manufacturer. Other times what you can do is go down to your local auto wreckers and uh, remove a wiring harness from uh, one of the vehicles in the yard itself. Now, this can be a cheap way to fix it. The only issue I would have with this is that uh, sometimes if the vehicle's left out uh, in the weather, it's maybe prone to a lot of moisture. Another thing is too is if it's an older vehicle, you may end up having the same issue further down the road considering the uh, wiring, the casing is somewhat dried up on it, maybe it's got a worn spot in it, it's kind of hard to say. Or what you can do is you can cut this wire out, go get a matching wire for it. Now not all times, this one here is a orange and black wire. Uh, not all times you can match the colors themselves. Uh, when I found, when I was looking for a replacement wire for this, the only one I was able to get is actually red for it. And uh, they weren't able to order a 20 gauge uh, orange. Uh, what you can do here is, uh, the best, uh, best way to do is actually cut it off of where you poke the needle through, which I'll be doing here. Uh, strip the wires back a little bit. Then down here where the wire was actually corroded, you want to cut it back a couple more inches because you're not sure how far that corrosion went through the wire itself. Sometimes you can cut it back and say, uh, just do an inspection on the end there to see if there's any, uh, any corrosion itself, uh, just to be certain because you don't want to be fixing this down the road. Then after you, what you want to do is uh, cut your matching wire to the correct length itself, uh, ensure that it won't be too short or too long, and then solder it into place. Now with soldering it into place, you can tape up the joints. Uh, that isn't normally the best method to do because it's still prone to weather. The tape can wear off and it's not a fully sealed uh, method. Or what you can do is put heat shrink on it. Now there is a couple different types of heat shrink you can get too. Uh, there is one which is just a standard style, just heats up, uh, has a tight fit around the wire itself so you don't have to worry about any moisture getting in. Or there's another type you can get uh, which does have a adhesive built within the heat shrink itself so when you do heat it up this heat adhesive melts and uh, bonds to the wire so that is a for sure uh, water sealed method. Now the only issue with soldering is that you'll actually have a hard spot in the wire itself so if you do have any vibration the wire needs to be bent it won't be flexible in that spot so it could possibly crack down the road it's kind of hard to say. Now this does depend on personal preference of how you want to repair your vehicle. Now this is, concludes my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please subscribe to my channel for further tutorials. And please rate this video. Thank you for watching.